Sebastian Vettel's crash at the Italian Grand Prix was yet another turning point in his career at Ferrari, but not in the right direction, as it signified once again why Sebastian Vettel is now on the downslope of his career, and also signified his time at Ferrari not being what it should have been. And all of this has led to me now having the opinion that Sebastian Vettel is no longer a top driver. But why do I think this? Well, make sure to check out this video where I'm going to explain why he is no longer a top driver, where his issues have come from, and what Sebastian Vettel needs to do for the future if he is to improve his current mental state and have a better Formula 1 career after Ferrari. So if you want to find out why I say that, then make sure to check out this video. Now let's first summarise Sebastian Vettel's 2019 season with Ferrari. Now after testing, Sebastian was hoping for the third consecutive year to mount a title bid against Lewis Hamilton for what he was hoping to be his first world championship with Ferrari. But after the first four races, Sebastian's title bid was basically over one because Sebastian was not exactly driving great, but also the Ferrari car was nowhere near as good as it was advertised during testing. But despite that, in the first six or seven races, Sebastian was getting the best out of quite a poor Ferrari car. A Ferrari car that at certain tracks was absolutely awful to drive, such as Monaco. But after the Canadian Grand Prix, as we'll get onto later on, that was a turning point for 2019, as after that, Sebastian, most of the time, things have not really gone his way, and he hasn't driven as well as he did before the Canadian Grand Prix. He has had a couple good performances, but most of the time, it just hasn't been quite what he was hoping for. And after testing, it definitely has not been the season that Ferrari were hoping for either. And here is how Sebastian's first 14 races of 2019 compared to his first 14 races of 2018. So after 14 races in 2018, he had 226 points. He was also only 30 points behind Lewis Hamilton at the time. He had 5 race wins, 5 pole positions and 8 podiums. But after 14 races in 2019, he has 169 points and is well over 100 points behind Lewis Hamilton. No race wins one pole position and six podiums. Now yes, the Ferrari car in 2019 has not been as good as the Ferrari car was in 2018, but I don't believe Sebastian Vettel has been massively improved on what he did in 2018. But when it comes to Sebastian no longer possibly being the number one driver of Ferrari and continuing to make silly mistakes, where do these come from? Where is the origin? Where exactly can we trace this back? And in my opinion, we can trace this back to as early as 2017. And the reason I say that is because despite Sebastian Vettel at Baku and Singapore, of course, making big errors when it came to the World Championship, in my opinion, 2017 was the final year of Sebastian Vettel's peak. For me, his peak was between 2013 and 2017. And despite what he did at back in Singapore, he was still very good in 2017, winning races such as Australia, he won very well in Monaco, Hungary, even though he had a problem, he still held on to the victory with help, of course, from Kimi Raikkonen, and his win in Brazil at the end of the year also was very good. And for the first 13 or 14 races, he was so consistent when it came to podium finishes and getting the points needed. And despite the season not ending how he would have wanted it to, I think 2017 was probably his best year at Ferrari. Because after 2017, things do not get better. The first half of 2018 was not too bad. He did have a couple races where either the team made a big mistake or he made a big mistake. But most of the time when things went a bit more smoothly, Ferrari and Vettel together were still a very formidable partnership. Especially in a Ferrari car that was still a very strong car, especially at certain tracks such as Bahrain, Canada, Silverstone circuits like that. And after the 2018 British Grand Prix where Sebastian Vettel took one of the best race victories of his entire career, it looked as though Sebastian was definitely heading towards either a very close end to the championship fight with Lewis Hamilton, or even possibly his fifth world championship as a driver. But then came that moment, as during the 2018 German Grand Prix at Hockenheim, at the Sachs Curve, 
During the race with Sebastian Vettel comfortably leading, he went off, hit the wall and retired from the race. And this moment is absolutely where things for Sebastian Vettel at Ferrari started to really go wrong. As it's never really on a consistent basis looked up from here. And his form right now I still believe can be traced back to this very moment. And for people saying well he redeemed himself at Hockenheim in 2019. He did not because you cannot forgive or forget something like this. He would go on a couple races later to take a race victory at Spa the 2018 Belgian Grand Prix. But to this date of this video coming out. That is Sebastian Vettel's last race victory in Formula 1. And after that win at Spa, the mistakes in 2018 for the rest of the season just grew and got worse and worse and worse. To the point where he and Ferrari completely threw away the 2018 Drivers and Constructors Championship. It was one of the most miserable ends to a season for any championship contender I think I've seen in a long, long time. And these were absolutely some of the darkest months and races of Sebastian Vettel's career. Now as we come to 2019, before we get into Sebastian Vettel's own mistakes and what caused that, let's first talk about the Ferrari car and why Sebastian has not quite been as good in 2019 as maybe he should be. Now whether you like Sebastian Vettel or not, in 2019 the Ferrari car has simply not been good enough for Sebastian Vettel to mount a challenge to Lewis Hamilton's world championship as the car has only really been good enough to win about five times so far in the 14 races we have had. You cannot win a world championship if your car is only good enough for five or six races in a 21 race season. So even if Sebastian Vettel massively improved on the back end of 2018, he was never going to contend for the world championship. Because in the first few races, and still a bit to this day, the front end of that Ferrari is so, so poor. They really do lack a lot of front end grip, and that's why at high aerodynamic tracks such as Hungary and coming up Singapore, Ferrari do have a poor car because they don't have the front end to be able to compete with Red Bull and Mercedes. But a big turning point for Sebastian in 2019 was when Ferrari around mid-season took away some downforce from the rear of the car and tried to focus on increasing downforce for the front of the car. Now if you look at Sebastian's history in Formula 1, he loves cars that are absolutely brilliant at the rear end or better at the rear end than the front end. So once they started to take downforce away from the rear end and focus more on the front end of the car, that's when Charles Leclerc started to improve and Sebastian started to get worse. That, of course, doesn't help. But saying that, for Sebastian Vettel, who is a four-time world champion, if he is the great driver that many people think he is, he should be able to adapt. For example, Max Verstappen, a person who I think will go on to be a great driver, in his first race for Red Bull, immediately adapted and won his first race for the Red Bull team. And also another example is say Michael Schumacher when he went from Benetton in 1995 to Ferrari in 1996. The Benetton car in 95 was a very good car but when he went to Ferrari he went to a car that was magnetically attracted more so to the barriers than the track. But still was able to adapt quickly and start winning races. Sebastian is able to adapt but not as quick as say a great driver would be able to. And even though they're trying to focus the downforce more on the front end of the car and that is affecting Sebastian's performance right now, for him being a four-time world champion, he has to adapt to that situation. Well, when it comes to his mistakes, they're basically a carbon copy of what we've seen before, even back in 2018. In Bahrain, Sebastian Vettel cracked under pressure twice and bottled it. He did that at least two or three times in 2018. In Canada, even though Sebastian Vettel did not deserve a penalty, he bottled it and went off the track and he started that whole situation happening. At Silverstone, simply he got way too aggressive and tried to pass Max Verstappen straight away when he didn't need to. And we've seen that before when it comes to Sebastian not being able to think ahead. And in Italy, it was a combination of one, again the rear end of the Ferrari car at the moment not being quite to Sebastian Vettel's liking, but also... 
him pushing a bit too hard because he was at Ferrari's home race and he wanted to impress. And also I want to lambast Sebastian once again because what he did at the Italian Grand Prix in coming back on track was so so bad. And I know this is a touchy subject but I'm going to say it. We had a driver at Spa in F2 killed because of a side on impact. Sebastian Vettel comes back on track in the middle of a fast chicane side on very very dangerously. Now considering that accident in F2 happened a week before, I cannot believe that Sebastian Vettel actually thought to do that. And for me, it was so disgraceful. And now as I sit here, Sebastian Vettel has little confidence and soon is becoming the Rubens Barrichello of the current Ferrari team. But why do I say that Sebastian Vettel is no longer a top driver? Well, if you look at 2018 and 2019, I don't think you can quite say his performances were of a top driver. Also, Charles Leclerc, after his wins at Spa and Monza, is now soon becoming the new number one of Ferrari. And it's now soon becoming the fans' favourite of the Tifosi. And going forward, Sebastian Vettel is not going to be favoured over Charles Leclerc when Charles Leclerc is the future of Ferrari. And even if Sebastian wanted to move to Red Bull or Mercedes, the other two front-running teams... He will not be a number one driver in those teams either because he's nowhere near as good as Lewis Hamilton or as Max Verstappen. So the best he can really be at a top team at the moment is a number two driver. And you can't call someone a top driver if they are a number two at a top team. But going back to Canada, I really do think Canada was a big turning point in the future of Sebastian Vettel's career because after he got a penalty that in my opinion was wrong and of course in Sebastian Vettel's opinion was wrong. He came out and said that Formula 1 was not the Formula 1 he fell in love with. If you want to read an article on that it's down below in the description. But that was a very very telling quote for me and I do believe that he is losing love with Formula 1. And for me the only way Sebastian Vettel can regain his love for Formula 1 is by leaving Ferrari. Because him racing for Ferrari at the top of the grid is not going to regain his love for the sport. What he absolutely needs is to go to a midfield team to regain his love of Formula 1 without the pressure. Because as the pressure is on right now, Sebastian Vettel is not going to love Formula 1 as much as he would, say, when he was at Toro Rosso when there was a lot less pressure. So I think Sebastian Vettel, what he absolutely has to do when it comes to the future of his career is leave Ferrari at the end of 2020. The longer he stays at Ferrari, the longer it's not going to work. It's as simple as that. What he should do is, starting in 2021, go to a team like a Renault or a McLaren, a team that's not quite a top team, but, you know, not too mired in the midfield, and try to regain your love for Formula 1. At a place where you have to say there will be a lot less pressure than racing at the front with Ferrari. And then after say two or three years in an upper midfield team, then I think it'd be good if he came back to a front running team. I don't know what team, but I do think he needs a break from running at the front of the field in a big team because I don't think Sebastian can any longer handle the pressure and I think it really is now getting to him. To the point where he's not enjoying what he's doing as much as he did before. And when that happens, you've got to start taking a break from that high pressure environment that is Ferrari. But one thing we can absolutely say is the Ferrari dream for Sebastian Vettel of winning a world championship is completely dead. He's not going to do it. It is a shame, but at the end of the day, Sebastian Vettel had his opportunities. In 2017 and 2018, he had two very good cars and two very good chances. But both times, he bottled it. And now it is time for Vettel to accept that his dream of winning with Ferrari is not going to happen. But guys, let me know in the comments section, what do you think about Sebastian Vettel's current situation? And for the future, what do you think Sebastian should do? Yep, guys, that is it for this video. Just want to say, you know, hit the like button, comment down below again, and also don't forget to subscribe for more content from me. It has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.